welcome, welcome. We are back again, beloved community, with yet another installment of the People's Water Work Coalition's Water Wednesdays webcast. As always, I'm here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. Can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica. She is simply marvelous. She always always gets us together. And today, we have back an old friend. She's been on our show before, and we love talking to her because she always gives us vital, pertinent information. We have, she is now the Public Water for All campaign director for Food and Water Watch. It's Miss Mary Grant. Thank you, Mary, right, thanks so much for, having for being me. here. Thanks for uh, coming on the show today, uh, Mary, so that we could talk about this. I, I don't think that people understand exactly what's going on, and we we need the boots on the ground for this uh, mm -hmm. for this topic. So we're going to jump right in. It's a short show. Um, can you tell our listeners about the proposed EPA rule requiring states to assess restructuring options? Sure. So this is a... New regulation that EPA is proposing that would require all states, in order for them to retain primacy and oversight of drinking water quality compliance, they have to set up procedures to force systems to do a water system restructuring assessment. And this is systems that are in non-compliance. The states get to determine really what would cons who would qualify for these mandatory assessments. And the assessment would be mandatory, but taking the actual restructuring action would be considered voluntary. But the rule does establish incentives, so like a lot of carrots to try to drive communities towards restructuring. In the proposed rule, EPA is using kind of a broad definition of the word restructuring, but the incentives are only for the most extreme forms. So like consolidation, transfer of ownership, management contracts. So this could be public sector consolidation, like regionalization. It could be privatization. So a transfer to private sector hands would all qualify for incentives if the plan is approved by states. So if they're, they're, they're not, they don't have to comply. It'll, it would be considered voluntary, but they have to do it. I mean, they have to do you... the study. Yeah. So the study would be, so the states would require, okay communities that are in serious noncompliance to do a study. Um, and they have to look at at least and, one and restructuring. Like noncompliance would be? A drink, like if they're, um, they have a violation of public health regulations for drinking water quality, like a lead violation, oh, arsenic, okay. Okay. something um, serious. So it has to be repeated and serious noncompliance. But the state gets to determine how that effectively, though the state gets to choose which systems are serious enough that they can force them to do an assessment of. So does that mean that a community could be in noncompliance, but if the state deems it not that, you know, as serious as maybe another community, that community will not necessarily get picked? Exactly. Yeah, the state has a lot of discretion oh, wow. about who has to do an assessment and who doesn't and how the rule actually goes into effect. But there, so the EPA rule sets up some guidelines and like a framework for how states have to do it. And states, all, every state, if they want to retain control of drinking water quality, they have to set up a program to mandate these assessments, which is kind of a big deal. It's very different than a lot of other rules yeah. because it's considered a requirement for the states to set up as part of their responsibilities to retain control of drinking water quality at the state level. Okay. And um, does this raise any red flags? And if so, what red flags do they raise? So we are mainly worried about, well, one thing is that it could be, restructuring is kind of a broad term and it can be good, it can be bad. We've seen it work really well when a small failing private system is taken over by a larger public water system. Charlotte Mecklenburg in North Carolina is a good example of that. Buying up small failing investor owned for-profit systems, tying them into ex mm -hmm. existing network to lower costs and improve service. This rule could also make it easier for a lot of small failing communities that have been historically excluded from water service. A lot of black communities in the South historically excluded from public drinking water supplies, like they have small failing systems right next to well-run systems, but the well-run system refuses to serve them. So it could be good in facilitating some of those transactions, but it could also be bad if it facilitates privatization. So we're very worried that it could be that was, used yeah. by the for-profit companies to try to 
coerce or strong arm some smaller systems into privatization yeah. systems like Jackson, Mississippi into privatization. Yeah. Um, it's already under a private management contract. It could go even further under this type of rule. And then also when you're thinking about like you all in Detroit and your experience with being cut out of the decision-making process through regionalization, what that means <laughs> for communities to lose their major asset, their biggest, often a drinking water system is a city's largest asset. And a Certainly lot is of, in Detroit. Mm -hmm, and Definitely. a lot of cities are seeing pressure from mostly whiter, mostly wealthier suburbs to take mm -hmm. control of the city, majority black city in particular is major asset, their water. And um, we're seeing that in Baltimore. It happened in Detroit. Detroit's kind of a warning sign for the rest of the country about what can go yes. wrong. Yeah. Yes. I yeah, was and privatization that... is never okay. It's never like, you know, it's never a solution that um, that fares well for the people. Or the, or the water, to be fair. Mm -hmm. It never, Absolutely. ever does um, once you let private corporations come in. And the EPA is just, you know, just famous at this point in time for not protecting communities. So when they make these, you know, this rule is really broad, you do wonder what kind of entities are going to step up and and take over, right? And how it's going to fare, for, especially for poorer communities and yeah. uh, black communities. We see it across the board. So that's, um, yeah, that's, you know that's never okay. It really, at this time, it really seems when I'm hearing how this is supposed to go down and maneuver, it really seems like another form of emergency management, you know? It and feels we like remember, that, right? <laughs> it does. It feels like we're getting another emergency manager. Maybe they're just focusing on solely water at this point, but it still feels yeah. like emergency management. Absolutely. Emergency management for the water. Exactly. <laughs> Never. Ew. And that's kind of like Never. destroyed. Emergency management, everywhere that I've talked to someone about emergency management, it has destroyed that community and their Absolutely. assets. And mm -hmm. it's like now, really, if you really think about it, that's the only asset that we have that is vital to all human life. And that's how we, I mean, that, and everybody wanted it. Our yeah. water system, like everybody wanted it. Yes. And that's how we ended up with the Great Lakes Water Authority, right? And An authority. So exactly. that they could, you know, they, they didn't all out privatize it, but they did type stuff. It was but like they this, made sure that the know. suburban communities, as Mary said, have more of a foothold on it without <laughs> actually saying Always. they own the DWSD. They technically make the majority of the major decisions for DWSD. So the rule has some good parts in it, and yes. it has some red flags, not so good parts in it. Um, if you look historically, of course, that's a, how it's going to fare out for those communities, right? Yeah. How it's going to play out. Um, you know, people really need to re read it, right? <laughs> they need to get in and read it and share it with their communities. And we've got some action steps for people because this is really, really important. It's going to affect yeah. all of us um, uh, in the future. So what kind of action steps can people take right now um, to oppose it, to learn more about it? But what can people do? What should they do? Sure. So there's three things that um, people can take, can do right now about the rule. So we worked with a group of organizations, including the People's Water Board, Michigan Welfare Rights Organization, NRDC, LDF of the NAACP, and the Community Water Center from California on a sign-on letter for organizations to sign on to and urge EPA to strengthen the rule, to really center safe, affordable, and accessible water for everyone. Right. So right. we're urging them make sure that there is a full range of alternatives that you situate it in the historical context of the community about mm -hmm. why there are water quality violations in that community, that it really promotes equitable outcomes and it removes that bias and that hammer towards some of these more extreme forms of restructuring, like consolidation or transfer of ownership, yeah. as well as to really make sure that you're defining what is affordable water service and ensuring mm -hmm. that the outcome will be affordable, particularly for low-income households within a community and again, one, one of the big things that's missing from this rule is a really public engagement process. So EPA in mm. the preamble of the rule talks a lot about wanting community engagement, but it's co almost completely absent from the process. Yeah. So we think that from the very beginning of 
who, which systems have to do the mandatory assessment from mm -hmm. identifying those systems all the way through to the app implementation plan and actually implementing sure what is recommended that you have everybody. community engagement at every step mm -hmm. that you're not bypassing referendum requirements like what happened in Detroit with the lease, that you're mm -hmm. respecting the will of the people, okay. that you cannot favor privatization systemically over other options. It can't be this tool of the for-profit corporate water lobby to push privatization onto communities. And that, again, like what we really need to center within the restructuring assessments is environmental justice and racial justice so that every community has safe, affordable water. Yes. So this is part of the sign-on letter we have. It's kind of a lengthy letter, and it also will help um, explain more about what the rule does. So we have a sign-on letter that we all worked on together for organizations to sign on to. You can take action yourself, um, go to the rule page and write your own comment, share your experience. Have you experienced restructuring? Do you know what it means when your water system is regionalized or privatized? Yeah. Um, and you can share your experience with EPA directly. And then right uh, now, right after this Water Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, you can go to EPA's second and final listening session. Yeah. Join the call, sign up to speak and tell EPA directly. Um, about your experience, about your concerns, and about your vision for safe and affordable water. And all of those links are going to be in the description box down below. So you can just go, as soon as you watch this show, you can go to those links, sign the letter, um, sign up to do public comment, all of those things. All of those links will be in um, in the, the uh, description box down below uh, for all you of know, our viewers. This is so concerning to me because as you were saying Valerie you didn't know about this until you spoke to someone and my thing yeah. is that so many people don't know what's going on we have to set up organizationally some way to educate communities about what's going on with things that apply to them so that they know yeah. and they can be well informed. Yeah, it's yeah, just... and it's going to take all of us. So right at let this show and the the marching orders that Mary just gave us. Yeah, um, uh, please, uh, you know, <laughs> please do those things and and because it really is it's important for all of us. Um, and if you're a loving person, you want somebody, you want all of your everyone to have safe, affordable water, right? This is um, that's what love looks like, and that's the way. Yes. Uh, that we have to think about this. It's, you know, you can't, you can't sit by yourself and be like, well, this isn't affecting me. Actually it is. And it's affecting yeah. your neighbors, you know, and, and communities around you. Absolutely. So absolutely. Um, this is what love looks like. Ultimately, okay, this um, is something that would affect all of us. It's no absolutely. one that can escape this. That's right. Do you have any final thoughts, Mary, um, before we wrap up anything that people need to know? Well, I would just want to thank you both for lifting this up. It is such, it's kind of a wonky issue when you talk about federal rulemaking and like, like you were, you're saying, Nicole, like people don't know about it. And uh. so getting the word out there is such the, the work you're doing is so critical to get the word out and drive people towards action so yeah. that they can get more involved. And honestly, like one of the things you can bring to EPA during the listening session is that they need to do a better job of getting the word out themselves. Like EPA mm -hmm. should be out here telling you that this rule is happening and asking for your opinion and your input into this process. Right, screaming um, so, it from the rooftops, it'd be great. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, this should be but, public knowledge for everyone, and it should be accessible mm -hmm. for all yeah. communities to know about. Absolutely. I want to thank you both so much for hosting this today. I know it's kind of a kind of a wonky thing, but I think it's so important. And so I want to thank you both as my final yeah. word and encourage everyone to hop on over to EPA and tell them what you think. That's Give right. That peace of your mind, a piece of your heart. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's yes. right. Thank you, Mary, so much. Um, uh, for telling, uh, for always staying up on these issues and the work that you do, you uh, make the world a better place every day. Um, and we appreciate you for that <laughs> so much. And um, yeah, thank you so much. And Nicole, thank you for going down this journey with me every week to all of our listeners. These are hard times. Look out for each other. Uh, yeah. Take these action steps and try to stay afloat. Take care. Bye. Yeah.